what was that commission worth? Uh, that one, uh, that one's also four twenty-five. So, and we got that one at six percent. So, this is probably like my third one in the, like the last two months. So, because of this, you got two listings, and now you're buying a house as a third from this with like multiple six figures in equity. Yeah, <laughs> bro, what the heck? Congrats, <laughs> dude! You just had your fastest turnaround circle prospecting. Like, you just set an appointment. You s- you set an appointment. You met with him two hours later. You sold him on working with you before you guys even entered the house. You signed with them. You already have photographers scheduled. And in two days, you're going to go active on the market. Yeah. Photos tomorrow. Met him today. Go live on Thursday. How much is this commission worth? Uh, about like 12, 13 grand. 12, 13 so Just grand. by representing him. Yeah. Found, and you found him this morning. This morning, I called them. It was just a circle prospect. Asked them like, hey, just call in, see if you had any plans of potentially buying or selling in the future. He's like, well, yeah. I actually been thinking about selling my house here in the beach. I'm like, oh yeah, why is that? We'll get we'll get into that, but like I want to tell the audience who you are. So like, how long have you been in this business, and what 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 has things looked like before working together? Um, approaching four years before we worked together, I did I did do a fair amount of business. You know, I can I was made I made a hundred grand my first year, made a little bit more the second year. I think I made a hundred grand again my third year, so I took a little bit of a dip. And this year will be my best year. Um, I think I've already done like 14 or 15 deals and I've still got the rest of this year and a lot in the pipeline. Mm. Um, my business book before was fairly unpredictable. When I'd meet a client, I was just hoping for the best that I would say the right thing or catch them at the right time, you know, just hoping and praying, right? Mm. Now it's not. So let's let's talk a little bit more about the um cuz you are a productive agent you were doing deals straight out the straight out the gates in the beginning although things were unpredictable how were you getting deals I did a lot of social media work so a lot of people in my town started finding me um I tried to I was attracted to like new construction so I made a relationship with the builder and I'd sit open houses for them and they'd throw me bones so I'd get some there and then referrals from those from those people and then about my second year I started diving into like for sale by owners and I got a few for sale by owners and then my third year I dove into pre foreclosures mm. and it was like about halfway through my third year because like the first half I didn't really work so the second half I hit pre foreclosures and I made a lot of money pre foreclosures mm. and for sale by owners and I was also circle prospecting too um, and I got a little bit from circle prospect I think that answered your question I would keep yeah yeah <laughs> thanks you mentioned earlier like the lack of predictability or doing things on accident was an issue before like tell me more about that i just didn't know what to say like anytime i had an appointment i would rehearse I'm like okay what do i want to talk about like what's gonna help me what can i say that's gonna get them to want to sign right and it was always like statements or one-liners that i was trying to come up with and i think most of the time like when i did do business i think it was because the client was already sold on buying the house or selling their house and they were recommended to me or I was just right there and they had some sort of sense of confidence in me. Because as much as I felt like I lacked sales skills, there were some th- things about real estate that, that I did know. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I was able to showcase some of my knowledge. Yeah, you're, you're competent. Yeah. You're, you you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I just lacked the sales skills. And so <clears throat> it was very unpredictable. And then I met you and then you taught me the framework and now it's kind of, I can rinse and repeat. Yeah, we've been working together for like the last few months um, and, you, and you joined the Acceler- Pro- like accelerator program a week ago. How has things like? What was the moment where you realized, like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, this is it's it's different now. When when was that? If if you had that moment, yeah, we've been working together for two months, and we were mainly you were mainly training on like setting appointments, and so I was understanding those concepts, but I still lack like okay, well, what am I going to do in person, right? Like, is it the same concept? Uh, at right? the presentation at the appointment, exactly, uh-huh. right? And so like I didn't, we didn't have much training on that and then i remember you had hosted a seminar and you were getting into that and you're like guys i'm not supposed to get this deep like this is an accelerator program like this is technically an accelerator call and at that moment i was like okay i want to be a part of that and then last week why 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 did you want to be a part of that when in the seminar like what you were doing was you kind of role play with yourself or with someone and uh like no matter what was thrown at you you can you can get over it Mm -hmm. right as long as someone has like the need like you can take care of them and put yourself in the position as like like that realtor right because you're just providing solutions you're understanding their situation 
situation. And I think that was one thing that I lacked. Like I think I would, someone would tell me that they wanted to do something, make a move for whatever reason. And I would just take that for face value and try to run with it mm-hmm. and start showing up numbers and comps and this and that. And uh, sometimes why, why it works. Why was that like, a problem? Why was that a problem with the way you were doing it? Because there were no emotions involved for the client, right? Like maybe at one point in time coming up to make that decision to want to sell or buy, there were emotions. But mm-hmm. then when they met with me, there were no emotions. They just knew that they wanted to sell. And why is the emotions important? It just compels them. Like I think I had sent a message today after my appointment said that this framework, like I feel like the guy was already sold on the idea of selling, but uh, had I not used the framework, who knows what would have happened and if he wanted to work with me, but I noticed I was gaining more clarity on his situation, why he wanted to sell. He wanted to start a business, a different business because of the industry that he's in. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And I'm still asking questions, still asking questions. And I, I had asked him, I'm like, okay, you know, I appreciate you sharing that. What's What would happen though? Or how would it be a problem to you if you didn't do this, right? If you just stayed put, right? And he starts sharing and going in and going on and and then ending up like, well, I want to retire my parents and that would make me feel good or like it's going to make me feel bad if I don't. And like you can feel it, right? It's not something that he memorized. It was something that he was living through in that moment. And um, feeling those emotions in front of you. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so it sounds like, you know, you know, you want to do this, right? It's just a matter of making this make financial sense. And this was this was a conversation like I had just walked up and we had just dove right into it. Okay. And, and so we were outside the house and when we had that conversation, conversation i was like all right well do you mind walking me through inside before i start running through numbers yeah and but at that point and then we had walked in I'm like hey listen i'd call my photographer before i came here he has availability as soon as tomorrow when do you think you're going to be ready he said tomorrow lips mm-hmm. okay i'm gonna need to send you the listing agreement sent it to him signed it right then and there we'll go live on thursday Dude, what it was happened if you didn't have the framework like i said i don't know what would have happened but i noticed that when his emotions are starting to come to surface uh-huh. like i noticed then like there was like a sense of urgency for him like i, I felt it yeah yeah. And so he was just like, yeah, whatever you need to do, Miguel, walk around. If you have any questions, let me know. Then it was just that sense of urgency was showed up. So basically, like, that's what you wanted to learn from that workshop or seminar that you saw when you were like, oh, I need to join the accelerator. What did you think learning that would do for you? Um, I think that it would bring predictability to my business, would give me confidence and that's just in regards to my business. I'll answer that question. But yeah, I think it would bring predictability, bring me confidence, bring me more competence. So now that you have more predictability in your, I mean, would you would you say you have more predictability in your business, in your appointment setting, and your and your closing skills at the at the appointment? Yeah, it des- it definitely has a little bit. Like I, I I do know I fumble through it still. So there's still a lot of ways I have to go and understand. I said, but just from but just from what um, I'm kind of already taking away and using it's already kind of instilled confidence. Like when I showed up to this appointment on my way to the appointment, I wasn't thinking about, okay, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? You know, I just kind of already, I know what I'm supposed to just have a conversation. Whereas before I'm thinking. Yeah. The one-liner, the magic one-liner. Yes. (laughs) If you had this skill and you could travel back in time to your first, second and third year, like how many more transactions do you think you could have done now that you have these skills to like close people? Well, I think now that, you know, I don't do my social media work as much as I did, Mm -hmm. like, man, I feel like I could, there were so many opportunities in front of me that I just fumbled because I didn't know what to say. Like people would connect us like, oh, here's my friend. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. He wants to do this. And I feel like I would just fumble and I'm scared, right? Right. Okay. And, uh, and so I feel like I could have done a lot of business those first couple of years. And now that I'm just doing just solely prospect, I want to get back to my social media work. But I mean, I like I could have easily done double what I have been doing easily. Dang. 200 plus your first, second and third year. Most definitely. Most definitely. Because there were so many opportunities in front of me. I mean, we were in the hot market in wow. 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah. Crazy hot market. There so what do you think you lacked? What do you think you lacked that made you like slip, sw- miss that opportunity? I feel like when you roll play like when i first met you mm-hmm. um and i'd hear you role play like the feeling that i got i'm like okay this guy aaron even though people want to con- control the conversation and when i say people i meant the prospects that you're prospecting to mm-hmm. even though they want to control the conversation get you off the phone you're calm and you grab the bull by the horns even if someone wants you to help them like they don't want to get you off the phone they want you to help them you're calm and you're grabbing the bull by the horns and you're just controlling it mm-hmm. uh, whereas for me i feel like i don't know i had no control of it whatsoever wherever the client took me that's where we went mm-hmm. and so i didn't I feel like i always felt like my clients lacked a little bit of confidence in me just because I lacked in some areas. You know, I feel like there's a lot that they wanted to share with me, but I didn't know how to pull. Wow. Okay. Miguel, if there was a an opportunity thrown your way, are you able to squeeze that lemon? I feel like I can do a much better job than than what I've done in the past. Like I said, I still fumble through sometimes, but I have some sort of direction and something to work with now that keeps on producing me the same as 
Go ahead. I want to know, dude, how the framework has actually affected your life. Because I remember when I first, when I, dude, when I first learned the framework, I, I, I realized that I could do it with my parents or like the girls I was talking to or my friends to convince them to do whatever. Like how has, how has the framework like affected your personal life? So I think before before I met the use the framework because you and I have talked about this of so, you know how I use the framework and how it what it means to me in my life. Well, I think before when people would talk to me about their problems just because they wanted to vent or whatever or talk about something that they wanted to do or I would just sit there and kind of listen. I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it, I get it, right? I wouldn't say much more. Whereas now, like, I always look for. I like talking to people now because I'm like, okay, like I can use this framework. And so like when people talk now, even that, not even because they're wanting much of a response from me, but I can actually converse with them and have meaningful conversations. And next thing you know you're getting deep and number one more meaningful conversations and then the thing is these people are saying about you're like man you, you really understand you know, i really appreciate our conversations you know with new people that i've met you know just first time we met the other person was nervous we're talking and little did she know what i was doing right but um you know i was doing it because i wanted to build that relationship and so even though it's a sales thing the framework mm-hmm. i think everything is sales and just because it's sales doesn't mean doesn't take away from that you want to help this other person or have a meaningful conversation it doesn't take away from that whatsoever so it's helped me build deeper relationships and have more meaningful conversations which is just more fulfilling overall dude it's um it's so effective in sales but what it really is is like it's just the ability to understand where someone's at unconsciously yeah and knowing what questions to ask to dig that out of them for them to get clarity because they might not even know consciously. Right. And and for you to have that skill, it, number one, it's so rare to have, it, it's so rare to have these kinds of, com- these deep kind of guided conversations where you know what questions to ask to take them to their like, their unconscious. It's so rare to have these kinds of conversations. And now you, and now you can have them with whoever you want. That's cool, man. Right. Well, look, dude, if someone was thinking about joining the accelerator to learn what you're learning and they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know, like things are just unpredictable. Like I I take like maybe like four listings a year. I don't know. Should I join the accelerator? What would you tell them? I mean, man, I think you can ask anybody in your discord, like even if they're not part of accelerator, but most definitely part of accelerator. We were learning appointment setting. But as soon as the accelerator, you take something from every single call and I always apply it. And I just notice I just builds my skills just a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and before this i mean it was just a matter of a couple months ago a couple weeks ago where i didn't i wasn't that good at making cold calls or having conversations with people and every single time we hop on a role play or a training session i'm able to improve my skills and uh within just a matter of a handful of phone calls you know i've been able to build that predictability with my conversations now. and what has that done for you and your business in my business well you know you just set more appointments and i've been mean, having taken too much business yet from using the framework i think this is about this is probably like my third one in the, like the last two months mm. but uh it's going to continue to grow my business right? as long as i'm out there making the phone calls that i need to be making then i'll do Wait, it. your third one what do you mean your third one like the third deal that i've taken from having these skills and prospects i did not know you <laughs> i did not know you had other deals from this yeah it's not my first one it's like, go on Aaron. you always forget everything i tell you i'm like I tell you every single time. <laughs> I tell you like every single time. Things from what you've been learning here. Well, like even, even the deal that of the property that I'm buying uh-huh. it was because I I think we we're doing I don't remember what it was and I was like I wanted to try with pre foreclosures and so I did and you know now we're working together. The one that I'm listening to today, one and it's like uh you don't really know my talent, but one over here I had just gone to word I'm like hey I think this guy wants to sell so I called and used the framework. The guy he didn't really want to hire a realtor, but then I was talking to him. And he's, I set the appointment. And then at the appointment, he's talking about how it's in a state that he's handling for his like brother-in-law and how it's so much work and his hands are full and blah, 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 blah. And we we're talking about how that, what that meant for him and what it would mean if he sold it and what it would be like if they could, didn't sell it sooner rather than later. And then I think in the middle of a conversation, he goes, how much he charge? Like 6%? Bro, you framework and, that guy too? Yeah. What, what was that commission worth? Uh, that one, that one's, uh, that one's also 425. So, and we got that one at 6%. So, I mean, something happened with his, with his sister-in-law so we have to hold off a little bit she's in the hospital okay. um but you know we have it wrong signs 
So because of this, you got two listings and now you're buying a house as a third from this. With like multiple six figures in equity, yeah. <laughs> Bro, what the heck? Yeah. Oh man. All right. This one is Congrats, crazy. dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Miguel, where where can people find you? You're you live in the Tri Cities. If y'all got referrals for Miguel, he'll close them. He's in the Tri Cities well, There's a thing down here. I don't know. I don't know who made this thing, but someone made it and it's when you need to sell, you call Miguel. I don't know who I don't know who made it, but that's the last yeah, no. word of this. Crazy. <laughs> what's your what's <laughs> Where, where can people follow you? Instagram is sell, so S E L L with W I T H Miguel and the number two zero. So sell with Miguel 20. Sell with Miguel 20. We'll write it on the screen. Dude, thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate it.